the Nassau grouper is now critically endangered, according to the new assessment by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Averaging about 20 pounds in weight, this predatory fish lives on coral reefs, and researchers say that reefs with Nassau groupers are found to be healthier than those without. But since 1980, the population of the fish in the region has drastically declined by 80%. We would say that the, the historical sort of baseline that we have at Glover's in the mid-70s was 15,000 fish. So even in the last uh, 15 years, we've gone from 3,000 to now in the hundreds. So we actually have, have potentially uh, really hurt the potential for uh, this species to propagate itself. That we might have already gone below the minimum required. Nassau groupers were produced between the months of December and March, known as the groupers spanning season. Mating occurs in only a few places like Glover's Reef Atoll, one of 13 known and protected spanning aggregation sites. But in 2018, the Wildlife Conservation Society recorded 925 individual fish, an alarming decrease from more than 3,000 fish just five years prior and historic highs of 15,000 in the 1970s. A recent survey conducted in January puts the Nassau grouper population at Glover's Reef Atoll at less than 400. The rapid decline of the fish can be attributed to three primary factors, loss of habitat, illegal fishing, and the primary threat, overfishing. Historically, this site was known to have thousands of fish. So this, I mean, it can be attributed to a lot of different things. One is the illegal fishing, which we actually saw happening while approaching the site. Looking at this case um, where we had um, a sighting of an illegal vessel, which most likely was not a Belizean vessel, um, by the description given our um, expert on enforcement, um, um, indicated that it was most likely not a Belize vessel. Um, so this fish isn't even being consumed in this country. One of the easiest things to do is to catch something when it's in one area, when it's concentrated. And that's exactly what these fish do at spawning aggregations. This is why it's called a spawning aggregation because they are not resident to the area. They move from one area coming over to this side. So it, it, imagine this table and everything coming from all around it to just this one corner. It makes it a lot easier for you to, to throw a line and actually get a fish. And these people that come and fish at these sites know these historic sites. There are laws and regulations protecting the Nassau grouper. For example, the grouper's spanning season is closed to fishermen. No fishing is allowed at the protected sites. And there is a size regulation of a minimum of 20 inches to a maximum of 30 inches. According to WCS Country Director Nicole Awil Gomez, Belize's regulations need to be updated. We are using an old fisheries bill and the new fisheries bill is pending and this year will mark 10 years since the commencement of trying to establish a new bill uh, through a special task force that was established back in 2010. 2009-2010 um, and the bill has been updated, it has been peer reviewed, it has been assessed by the OAS, um, uh, sorry, by the um, FAO and we would like to see how this bill, which looks at new initiatives for Belize and looking at sustainable livelihoods and looking at the importance of fisheries to people, to Belizeans, and looking at um, how the fisheries bill helps to manage the natural resources and not only the fishery um, itself. This bill is a new and modern bill. It increases fees um, and, and, and therefore increases um, deterrent to illegal fishing. But addressing this problem goes beyond regulations and deterrence. More boats in the sea are needed in order to enforce the regulations. Night fishing is a major issue at this era. Transboundary fishing as well. And if you don't have the correct vessels to go, then obviously you won't be able to enforce the area. So regardless of the regulation that is in place, you need to ensure that there is some type of surface asset out there, that there are people out there actively enforcing these areas. What we would like to see is that um, there's more investment, obviously, from the government of Belize, as well as we want to see that collaboration occurring between these countries, um, between Belize, Guatemala, and Honduras in particular, to ensure that um, you know, these areas are enforced, that um, seasons are adhered to. Scientists believe 
that if the problem is not addressed in a timely and effective manner, the Nassau grouper will be extinct sooner than we thought. The Nassau grouper is, is an iconic representative of, of our reefs here in Belize and throughout the Caribbean. So if we see that species of fish being diminished, we, we would feel that the entire, and we do have data that backs up other fish species and the general health of the coral system is also in decline. And that is so important to not only Belize, but the entire region. I mean, for livelihoods and for tourism and for coastal protection, all these systems are critical. And I think the, the Nassar grouper, you can consider it a canary in the coal mine. It's really the, the animal, the fish, that that is representative of what's going on in the reef more generally. And I think um, everybody in the country and the region should be concerned. Hippolyto Novello, News 5.